Thank you for joining me for another video. There's a lot happening in the world right now. Many of faith and none alike are wondering what's going on. Some are asking many questions. Uh, what I'd like to do in this video is to give a very brief recap, then a little bit of commentary at the end of connecting the dots. The thing about connecting the dots with all this is you can go off on so many tangents and uh, I'm unscripted. We're going to cover Fatima, Garabandal, Akita, Medjugorje, each one, first of all, and then see where the themes come in together, how it relates. I would invite you to watch my Marian Apparitions uh, playlist in chronological order, as I've done each video in accordance with these and a couple of others, and they're in that order of the, the dates of the apparitions, we're not going into depth here. I'm taking for granted that you have watched them. And if you haven't, here's the link up here at the top. You can see at the end or in the bottom, go to the now and then come back. It's your choice. But this will make more sense to those who are at least watched my videos and are aware of these apparition sites. So let's cover it. Fatima, 1917. May 13th to October 13th, Our Lady appeared in the 13th of each of those months, May through to October. She first of all spoke and gave some uh, secrets to the children, uh, which have been, well, it's one big secret put in three parts, as they say. Uh, part of it was there was an evil scheme in Russia. The old World War One was already underway. She spoke about how that will come to an end, but if people didn't change, if the world didn't change its ways, there'd be an even worse war. Uh, and there's an evil scheme within Russia at the time uh, that will spread its errors, it will attack the church and as we know of Russia came communism. Um, we'll also get a part of the church and the Pope which is more within the so-called third secret of Fatima. Here it is just now so you understand with the vision. At the left of Our Lady, and a little above, we saw an angel with a flaming sword in his left hand. Flashing, it gave out flames that looked as though they would set the world on fire, but they died out in contact with the splendour that Our Lady radiated towards him from her right hand. Pointing to the earth with his right hand, the angel cried out in a loud voice, Penance, penance, penance. And we saw in an immense light that is God, something similar to how people appear in a mirror when they pass in front of it, a bishop dressed in white. We had the impression that it was the Holy Father. Other bishops, priests, men and women religious, going up a steep mountain, at the top of which there was a big cross of rough hewn trunks as of a cork tree with the bark. Before reaching there, the Holy Father passed through a big city, half in ruins and half trembling with halting step. Afflicted with pain and sorrow, he prayed for the souls of the corpses he met on his way. Having reached the top of the mountain, on his knees, at the foot of the big cross, he was killed by a group of soldiers who fired bullets and arrows at him and in the same way there died one after another, the other bishops, priests, men and women religious, and various lay people of different ranks and positions. Beneath the two arms of the cross there were two angels, each with a crystal, a spersorium, in his hand, in which they gathered up the blood of the martyrs, and with it sprinkled the souls that were making their way to God. So as we heard there, it contains a lot to do with the church and with the Pope. 
the city half in ruins, many believe, is the Vatican. The fact that the Pope was shot at the cross, bullets and arrows, many see the arrows as a, an apostasy, the shield of faith, Ephesians 6, against the fiery arrows of the devil. Uh, so the apostasy, it seems to be all targeted to the Pope. The thing about the sh shooting of the bullets is we know John Paul II was shot, but when was he shot? He was shot on May 13th, 1981, the Fatima anniversary, many years later. On his recovery, he had uh, a commission set up and a full investigation into the Fatima apparitions back in 1917 uh, were looked into as well. Uh, then in the year 2000 in Fatima, he spoke of it and how it was seen as being fulfilled. Massive story, massive event of what occurred there. But many still believe a lot of what was in that third secret of Fatima is still to be interpreted for a time. Many believe a lot the church held back on. Uh, but we'll look in a little bit more on that in terms of understanding it for our times. As Cardinal Joseph Ratzinger, as we know best now as Pope Benedict XVI, when he was the head of the Congregation of uh, Doctrine of the Faith for many years, he did comment saying that the children who were given the vision in Fatima were given the vision, not the interpretation. And you'll find much more on the Vatican website all about it as well. And it's just good to highlight as well that when Our Lady appeared in these places, it was always to children, with the acceptance of Akita. There was a young lady who was a nun. But always with children, with these massive uh, messages that we're going to highlight now. So we see a church continued theme from that vision coming into Garabindal. Now, rather than the vision of what Fatima was containing that, we're now getting into direct messages to the world clear words from Our Lady transmitted through the children. In Garabindal she gave two messages to the world, the second one being most severe. This is what it said. Since my message of October 18th 1961 has not been complied with and has not been made much known to the world, I will tell you that this is the last one. Before the chalice was filling, now it is overflowing. Many cardinals, many bishops, and many priests are on the path of perdition and are taking many souls with them. To the Eucharist, there is given less and less importance. You should avoid the wrath of God by your good efforts. If you ask pardon with your sincere soul, God will pardon you. It is I, your mother, who through the intercession of St. Michael, wish to say that you amend that you are already in the last warnings, and that I love you much and do, no, do not want your condemnation. Ask us sincerely, and we will give to you. You should sacrifice more. Think of the passion of Jesus. It was unthinkable that children could come out with those words back in the 1960s. Many priests, bishops and cardinals on the path of perdition leading many souls with them. It's easy to understand about less reverence given to the Eucharist as we can highlight the dates during the Vatican II Council. Uh, not to point fingers and blame Vatican II for many of the things that's changed. However, from then till now, many things have changed. Many things that were not even part of the, the documents. If you hear some of the uh, cardinals speak, uh, like for example, the church altar rails was never supposed to be taken away. It was never mentioned at the Vatican, it's not part of the documents, but many things have changed over the years with whoever's got involved somehow. Uh, but the many priest bishops and cardinals on the road to perdition, it's probably why Garabindal's never been accepted. Uh, but we have one clear indicator of the times. Listen to this. We've got popes, four. Four more popes. And then we're into a new era. Four more popes after the death of John the Twenty Third, who was the one that opened up the Vatican II Council. One will have a short reign. Now this message was given uh, many years before this event occurred. Are you ready? 
Four popes with one with a short reign after the death of Pope John the Twenty Third. We have had Pope Paul the Sixth, John Paul, who reigned for thirty three days, the short reign, thirty three being the year of Christ as well. Thirty three days he reigned. Then with John Paul the Second, the spark of Poland, who fulfilled the prophecy of May thirteenth, nineteen eighty one, of being shot. And then we have. Pope Benedict the Sixteenth. That is your four popes of the Garabindal prophecy. And of course we wait for the new era of the fifth, but what happens we get two at the same time with Pope Francis. The many highlight as well that if we went with the prophecy of the St Malachi list, which I don't put too much emphasis on, there's a number of popes all the way over the centuries to the last pope, Petrus Romanus, but the one before that, Glory de Olivia, where Benedict would fit in. Glory of the Olive, Glory of the Olivia, Glory of the Olive, and that's the Benedictine emblem. So Benedict was the Glory of the Olive. But rather than jumping then for Petrus Romanus, which never had a number, it's as if there was a gap. Who would have thought these centuries later there had to be two reigning popes during that time? Keeping us in suspense, perhaps. <laughs> so we have the four more popes. Some believe they have to wait until Benedict dies before the new era begins. But look at the events happening in the world. Look at the events happening within the church. Pope Francis seems to the bo- Pope Francis seems to be the most controversial, or the most misrepresented, or the most misunderstood pope. And uh, I think he's getting a lot of he's getting it tight from a lot. But based on a lot of documents and synods and things like that, uh, there's a lot of confusion going on, and this is where we have to be careful. But which leads me on to the warning of Garabindal. Our Lady gave a message to the Vision of Conchita, a young girl. The warning will be an illumination of conscience. It will, it's not going to be foretold when, it will just happen, and everyone in the world will be able to see it. She describes it as two stars coming together will give off a lot of light, a lot of noise and at that point everyone will have an illumination of conscience. It will serve to correct themselves and their senses and see themselves before God. It will be a frightening experience. It will last about 15 minutes or so but everyone on the planet, regardless of what you're doing, where you are, you're going to have this illumination of conscience which will then serve its way into the great miracle within 12 months at Garabindal itself. Conchita will announce the miracle eight days in advance. The warning will happen without notice, but the miracle will occur within 12 months. Afterwards, which will be left at Garabindal in the Pines, will be the permanent sign for everyone to see, photograph, televise, uh, but won't be able to touch it. And it will be a gift from God himself to bring about conversions. The same description of that sign came years later in Medjugorje with one of the secrets that was allowed to be revealed. More on Medjugorje in a minute. Of course, with the messages highlighted in it, there's going to be a great chastisement with the chalice flowing over. And that was back in the good old swing in the 60s. Look where the world's went now. We then come to Akita, Japan where Our Lady appeared to the nun, a Buddhist convert, Sister Sasagawa. Again, go back to each video, it's more in depth to cover the knowledge. But to recap, here is the messages of Akita, particularly the second message. Listen to this. As I told you, if men do not repent and better themselves, The Father will inflict a terrible punishment on all humanity. It will be a punishment greater than the deluge, such as one will never seen before. Fire will fall from the sky and will wipe out a great part of humanity, the good as well as the bad, sparing neither priests nor faithful. The survivors will find themselves so desolate that they will envy the dead. The only arms which will remain for you will be the rosary and the sign left by my son. Each day recite the prayers of the rosary. With the rosary, pray for the Pope, the bishops and priests. The work of the devil will infiltrate even into the church in such a way that one will see cardinals opposing cardinals, bishops against bishops. 
The priests who venerate me will be scorned and opposed by their confronters. Churches and altars sacked. The church will be full of those who accept compromises and the demon will press many priests and consecrated souls to leave the service of the Lord. The demon will be especially implicable against souls consecrated to God. The thought of the loss of so many souls is the cause of my sadness. If sins increase in number and gravity, there will be no longer pardon for them. Now that second message, not only does it echo much of what's going on with Garabindal, but it was also given on October 13th, 1973. October 13th, 1917 was the great miracle of the son at Fatima, where the children says months prior to it, that Our Lady promised to give a great sign for everyone to believe. And an estimated 70,000 plus people in the soaking rain in the mud drenched uh, field, the Koba, witnessed a great miracle, including those of the police and the army who were trying to shut the church down. It was in the papers and at the time and photographs or even online. You see the people, tens of thousands of people looking up at the miracle. The woman clothed in the sun, as she was described, takes us back to that book of the apocalypse. The end of times, Armageddon, the battle between Michael and the dragon, the woman clothed in the sun. And Lucia, who became a Carmelite nun, always says read between the chapters in 8 and 12 of the book of the Apocalypse. So if that's where we are back then, where are we coming to now? Look where it's the dragon whipping away the stars of heaven. Are we talking about the scandals of the, the church? Are we talking about this division? talking about the infiltration of the devil into the heart of the church. No one's getting the Eucharist right now because of this constant pandemic. The, the churches are closed. They didn't have to use communism. They didn't have to lose, use violence. Look where we are. So some real hard graft and messages delivered to the children of Garabindal and the nun of Akita. Are these the messages and words that were contained in the vision of Fatima? Many believe the church is holding back in a lot of what was said at Fatima. Many debate whether or not the consecration to Russia by the Pope was done correctly. We'll get into all that in a minute, what I think, but let's move on to Medjugorje. The Medjugorje began June 24th, 1981. But really the 25th became the more formal one. But as we know in the, uh, the date, as the feast day of John the Baptist. The many always felt over the years that as John the Baptist was the last of the Old Testament prophets preparing the way for the Lord. So the Queen of the Prophets is preparing the way for the Second Coming. But one thing you'll notice is these hard messages and visions have not been made clear or stated publicly by the visionaries in Medjugorje. Instead, the focus is on the remedy. The one visionary especially we should focus on is Mariana. Mariana was given 10 secrets and she's to reveal them to the world via her priest of choosing, and she chose Father Petter in his mid to late 70s, the last I checked. She is the one with him to reveal the secrets in time to the world when she's told. One of those secrets was the permanent sign, which echoes the description of Garabindal back in the 60s. Now, as John Paul II was recovering from his shooting on May 13th, 1981, not long afterwards, Our Lady appears in Medjugorje with a big statement. What I began in Fatima, I will finish here at Medjugorje. My Immaculate Heart Will Triumph. That is a massive, massive statement. It takes everything from it and we have reached that point of the century now and a little beyond where the triumph is near. And in a timely fashion, just over a year or so ago, Mariana, the visionary of Medjugorje, writes the book, My Heart Will Triumph. It's a great read. I do recommend it. Now, some of the things Mariana has stated in the book 
is like sh when the secrets are coming, they're, they're, they'll come in succession. Some events will lead to them. Some events will lead up to it. Again, with the warning, certain pre-warning events will lead up to the illumination of conscience, as says in Garbendal. But what she said in her book is, I can't go into the secrets and the content for now. However, I do see with the world certain things and events. Things are now in motion. And this was coming back a couple of years ago, uh, writing that book or so. Since then, of course, when have we seen the world in lockdown? When have we seen uh, anything like it, basically? One of the other dates given to Mariana, who after receiving the Ten Secrets, now sees Our Lady on the second of the month, every month, and on her birthday, which is March 18th. Now, Our Lady specifically told her that March 18th is not the reason she's appearing due to her birthday, but the reason she's appearing on this date will become significant in time. Uh, I still believe that's still to happen in the future. Maybe it's the times of the secrets, whatever, who knows. But this March 18th, 2020, just a few weeks ago uh, from this recording, Mariana has a message given as normal. But then her lady tells her out of nowhere, a complete surprise, you will no longer have the second of the month message. Now this came in the exact same day, just a few hours later, after I read about the bishops of Scotland choosing to close down the churches in the entire country, along with other bishops who have made that same choice in other countries as well. March 18th is also the vigil before the feast day of St Joseph on the 19th, but having read that, that no longer we're getting the Eucharist for some time because of this global pandemic, the, the visionary to reveal the secrets has now been isolated away from Our Lady for an entire year at least, until the next March 18th. The 2nd of April's passed now and no one's in Medjugorje. No one's anywhere because of this global pandemic. Now, of all things, we're in that era of Arata with the Popes. Mary Julie Jaheni, the, the stigmatist and mystic, apparently says many things will occur in the reign of two Popes. Look what's happening in the world. Now, out with all everything, these are the messages, these are the things of chastisements, there's a lot of fear, a lot of bad things happening. But in Medjugorje, for these last 39 years almost, it's the remedy. You don't focus on all this. Focus on the request. Pray, fast, go to Holy Mass, receive the Eucharist worthily, read the Holy Bible, conversion, peace. Many of the messages contained here as well. Penance. You heard the angel. Penance, penance, penance. No sacrifices. We forget what it means to love and to love God. And the whole point of these things are aid us towards that loving, personal relationship with God. The world has turned to the back in God, especially the West. Medjugorje is the remedy becoming to the fulfilment. Because we can know all these things, we can know the dates, we can know the contents of the secrets. But if that, we die tonight without any of this being fulfilled, are we ready to be before our Lord? So that's the lowdown. Here's what I think on a spiel. Everything started with Fatima. If you go back a little further to Pope Leo the Thirteenth, October Thirteenth, eighteen eighty-eight, I believe. You'll see it in my first video on the playlist. He has a mystical experience uh, where he heard God grants the devil the twentieth century to ch to, uh, to test the church and the world. He says shortly into the 20th century it will happen. And that's where your St Michael the Archangel prayer was created. Shortly into the 20th century, Our Lady appears in Fatima. The miracle of the sun highlights the book of the apocalypse along with Michael the Archangel. And one thing to note, the resemblance between Fatima and Garib and Dal, is Michael the Archangel appeared to the kids before Our Lady did. That was the beginning of it all happening, we were already in World War One, 
Our Lady came to take on the dragon, to take on the devil. We're in that war as in the book of the apocalypse. I think a lot of what was never given over the decades in the church until the shooting of John Paul II opened up that commission. He made the act of consecrating the world, which included Russia, and within the year the Iron Curtain fell. Many still debate it wasn't done, but as much as the West will never say good much about Russia, the West has turned its back. The European Union take, took the God and Church out of the Constitution. Uh, the way kind of the West has went, Russia did spread their errors. Russia, I, th I believe, was the first country to bring in legalised abortion. And then the West followed on in suit. Russia's done a U-turn a lot in that, where it's much less than it was. Whereas in the West, such as uh, in America, under Bill Clinton and then Obama, you had partial birth, post-birth abortions, taking on something I don't believe was ever echoed from Russia. Uh, Russia, just a few weeks ago, before this pandemic kicked in, was looking to bring in into its constitution of marriage being between man and woman. It would still be mum and dad, not parent one and two. Yet in the West, in the last 20 years, we've seen the movements of all the LGBTQ. Now that's not my personal thing against anyone, I'm just highlighting in an objective manner of the difference. So I would say that conversion is there with Russia, since the, the Pope of the Vision being shot on May 13th, 1981, fulfilling that vision of Fatima, did do so. Garib and Dal started speaking a lot of what I believe may be a spiritual death in that vision of Fatima, of the city in ruins, the, the, the arrows of the apostasy, the key to the division of the church spoke about it again, the devil got into it. Why would the church want to speak about, yeah, early they says the devil's coming in and taking over? We're in a time zone with the popes. And speaking of the time zone, now that Our Lady stopped appearing uh, to the, in every month to the visionary Marianas to reveal the secrets, coincidentally in time when the churches of the world are shut and no one's receiving the Eucharist, I mean, think of what we're saying. Overnight, the world stopped receiving the body and blood, soul and divinity of Christ in the Holy Eucharist. And what's more interesting now is if you remember of 1981 when she first appeared in June. We're getting into the 39th anniversary of this June, which is the tick tock, down the clock, counting down towards the 40th anniversary. Now 40 is a big number in the Bible. The, the promised land, they were wandering through the desert for 40 years with Moses until they came at the promised land. Jesus was in the desert for 40 days fasting before his ministry began. 40 seems to be about trial and purification to get ready for the good stuff to come, the promised land, to see the Lord and his work. <clears throat> so is it the fact of the countdown now into that 40th anniversary of Medjugorje where she says, I'll finish here what I began in Fatima. My heart will triumph. She did say Russia will come to glorify God the most, which echoes Padre Pio, the mystic stigmatist priest, who says Russia will show America a lesson in conversion. What may come soon now, therefore, is the secrets may start to unravel. The one last thing I'll speak about, like I say, this can go off on a tangent, but the warning, the illumination of conscience, again, there'll be events leading up to the warning. If this pandemic ain't one of those events, then what is? We've already seen on a biblical scale the migration of people coming over in last year, which is still happening, we just don't get it in the news. There's certain things happening in grand scales never seen before. But one of the things of the pre-events of that illumination of conscience, of the warning, was a synod. Now, synods happen all the time under the popes. There have been many. But now we're living in this new era where there are two popes on earth at the same time. We've reached that number four. The most controversial synod out of them all 
which had certain cardinals opposing what was happening and speaking about it publicly using the tools of the internet and social media such as Cardinal Burke, Bishop Schneider, Cardinal Sarah. The one that was even seen as apostasy and sacrilege was the worship of the Amazon goddess, the Pachamama, Pachamama where we call her. It was the Amazon Synod, which happened in October. And it also covered the anniversary of the October week of the, the Fatima Miracle of the Sun, October 13th. October 2019, we had the Amazon Synod. Now, if you look at the Pachamama, she's not just a goddess of fertility. She's seen as a goddess of harvest, of the crops, of farming, things like that, of Mother Earth. And what's happened since October to now is the Australian bushfires have already spoken about. We're seeing the locusts going from East Africa all the way up to Russia and all the other countries in between. But we ain't getting any of it on the news because of all this pandemic. How biblical can you get? And the, when you're worshipping the wrong goddess and then you look at the Bible with the plague of locusts because they're not worshipping the true God, it gets them away to the promised land to worship the true God. Things and events are happening with this Pope. And I'm not speaking against the Pope, but you have to weigh up the signs of the times. We have division in the church. They are speaking about against these things where that uh, worship happened in the Vatican Gardens on the month of October, where this division was mentioned in Nikita, where the miracle of Fatima happened. A couple of months later, all these pan as soon as 2020 began, we've had everything. And now Our Lady stopped appearing in the monthly message to the visionaries to reveal the secrets. Many are actually thinking now that because we're in lockdown, there's a recent message given by Conchita. You'll see it on the Marian Apparitions Facebook group. Please join it. It's myself that runs it. And I have a couple of people on the admin team, including a very good personal friend of Conchita herself, who's in quite a, a lot of contact with her each week, Glenn Hudson. And she gave a message recently about all this going on. Time to regain a time of silence, regain the senses. When you think about senses, when you think about that little examination of conscience, many people silently, calmly, not in hyper hysteria, believe that this lockdown now without the Eucharist, without our Lord, is actually a time to get back to him spiritually, have that examination of conscience. What are the senses saying? We're not getting anything else in the news other than this. We're given away from warfare, of murder, of of LGBT stuff, we're get, I mean, even one of my gay friends says it's great to get a break from it, obviously. <laughs> we're just getting the coronavirus, which we can just turn off. But if we take away that silence, walk about the streets, go that daily walk, that quiet time, what's important in life? Many believe right now this is a precursor to this illumination of conscience, which came after the most controversial synod known in the church in recent generations. What's the countdown happening now? What's happening? When is this going to be revealed, these secrets? I personally believe the secrets do contain a lot of what's covered because I do believe these are all linked together. This is the plan of, of the century for Our Lady to change the world for the good, for that era of peace. But a lot of things are going to happen before that peace comes. As always, dear friends, have no fear but trust in the Lord. More on this to follow soon. Please hit the thumbs up, subscribe. Share this to many people as you can. Make them start thinking. Let them start watching the videos in depth on the channel. Look me up on the Facebook group, Marian Apparitions. Over 5,000 people have now joined it. I'm seeing a rocket numbers joining every hour of every day where we're getting the message out there for the times that we're in. The triumph is near. God bless.